Hello there. Delighted to have you on board. This is part two. You may remember that last week we had a special word about spiritual violence. That's the force of faith, determination, won't quit, definitely won't quit to grab the promises and to see them real in your life. We discussed those things. I quoted several scriptures and then we got to the Big Ten. I only got to verse one of the Big Ten. So I'm gonna to start today with verse two. Luke 15, verse 31. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. That's where spiritual violence comes into it. Will you make up your mind, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get it. Just imagine, I hate to use this phrase, but you're somewhere and somebody's trying to abduct your little grandchild. Would you say, oh, well, no, you would be so angry. Yeah, you go in there with force and power. Well, this has nothing to do with physical force, but you get the picture by thinking of spiritual violence. And what do you say? God is ever with me and everything he has is mine. Wow, 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 wow. But look at the next one, number three. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock. I will not be afraid. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Good gracious. I look around our headquarters here, the tabernacle, the Bible Museum, the different facilities. It's altogether magnificent. How did it happen? He made it clear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask big. For it is your father's good pleasure. We're not trying to force him into something that he doesn't want to do. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Wow. Number four says, John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief, which is the devil working through religious operators like the scribes and Pharisees. The thief cometh not, three things the devil does, steal, kill, and destroy. Maybe you've had that happening too much in your life. But Jesus said, I am come, why? To make people miserable. I am come that you might have life, Zoe, the Zoe of God, and that you might have it more abundantly. He's not just talking about material things. He says, I've come to demonstrate the goodness, the wonderfulness of God Almighty, His Father, and to show it to you more abundantly. Wow, 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 wow. Philippians 4.19, what a scripture. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why do we not play tricks over television to get money from people? I've been told before, you know, I would have it made to use stories from Ireland, play in the sympathy of Americans, get money. I never do it. I won't do it. Because I know you'll be shocked you'll be shocked at this. If you never send a dime, I wish you would, but if you never do, God is still going to meet my needs and the needs of this ministry because He gave me this promise. It's for you too. But my God shall supply all your need and just gives the singular, not the plural, all your need. We only have one need, and that's Jesus. Everything else comes part of him. According to his riches, not according to our needs, according to his lavishness in Christ Jesus. My goodness. Look at Matthew 6, 33. 
but seek ye first the seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I heard a preacher say in television the other day that that word is righteousness means doing good deeds. No, it does not. It's DK Usine. DK Usini, some says. It's the gift of righteousness, the gift of imputed righteousness, where we're made perfect in Christ. Ye are complete in him, we're accepted in the beloved. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Look what it says. All these things shall be added unto you. What so many in the church want to do, or preachers, is to go after that which is to be added. Don't do that. Seek first the kingdom, his righteousness, and these things will be added automatically. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Wow. Psalm 23, verse 1. I love it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does a shepherd do? He feeds, he leads, he protects. Imagine having that kind of a security agent. God Almighty leading, feeding, and protecting. I shall not want. And it means it both ways. I shall not want that which I should have because he will supply it. And I shall not want that which I shouldn't have because he will take away the desire for wrong things. Psalm 34, verse 10. The young lions. Boy, I love to look at lions. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Reminds me of that verse in Jeremiah where God said, And ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me, when ye shall seek for me with all your heart. The young lands do lack and suffer hunger. Those that are most well able to look after themselves, even they will lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh, the becoming one, the God in contract with us, shall not want any good thing. Number 10 is Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, trusting him, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, sure we believe that, and that he is a rewarder, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please let your life be God's word oriented. Diligently seek his face. Tell him every day that you love him, that you're going to put God first, that you know Lord, your way is the best way. I realize, Heavenly Father, that there's only one life twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Jesus will last. And Lord, I realize in a new way that the Word is there not just to be admired. It's a weapon to be fired. Think of it again. The weapons of our warfare. We're in war need weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wow. Please. I'm reminded for some reason of a funny little, is it a joke or a, a little story from England many years ago? The soldier dropped his musket and the whole thing, his gun. Pick up your musket, lad. No, I didn't drop it. And if I didn't drop it, 
I'm not picking it up. Pick up your musket, lad. No. I'm saying to you, pick up your musket. Pick up your rifle. Take time. There's an old hymn that says, take time to be holy. And if you don't have time to take up your musket, take up your rifle, take up God's word, meditate on it, verbalize it, say it, fire it off, then you're too busy. If you're so busy, you're too busy. God's blessing our services here every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We're in a wonderful series at the moment. And I want you to come this Sunday at 10. If you live too far, please watch us live on YouTube. And also, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're reaching a lot of people in different parts of the world. I urge you, as I close this particular teaching, I urge you, I love you with all of my heart. I only want the best for you. Pick up your musket, lad. Pick up God's word. Say it, say it, say it. When I was a, but a teenager, I learned this lesson. And I'll tell you where I learned it from. Psalm 107, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I find when you say it, there's an explosion. And the kingdom suffereth violence. People are going to grab the promises in a way that means they don't quit very easily. In fact, they don't quit at all. Lord bless you. See you again Sunday or next week. God be with you. Bye-bye.